Polaris really defined the 500 class with the introduction of the innovative sportsman. Today, there are a lot of 500 machines trying to imitate the sportsman, but there's only one sportsman. So let's see who's truly the leader of the pack. We're comparing the Sportsman 500 EFI to the Honda Rubicon Foreman, Honda Foreman ES, Arctic Cat 500, and the Suzuki Vincent 500. We ran all the 500cc machines through three tests to see how they perform for four-wheel drive, suspension, and power. The competition started to struggle as soon as we hit the dirt. First, let's see how they handle a variety of terrain like you might find out on the trail. We call it our steeplechase course. From a dead stop, our riders accelerate through a rock run, over a log, through a wash, and then power through a corner and up a hill. This Honda is powerful, but handling gets dicey and rough stuff because the straight axle loses traction and the shocks have no load adjustments. And look out for that log. The Foreman Rubicon has the worst ground clearance and smallest tires in its class. Feel the pressure of the terrain on your foot as you lean into the corner and rock back and forth on the foot peg bouncing up the hill. Foreman ES goes, but in the ruts, the straight axle sends a chatter to the handlebars that rocks the rider and tosses the machine side to side. The thumb shift design does not make it easy with all that handlebar vibration going on. And that lurching makes even this short jaunt feel like a long haul. The Vinson hits the rocks hard. This machine has the least amount of front wheel travel in the group. And those two star tires send a signal to the rider. You can really feel what you're riding over. And the shiver up your spine is that straight axle talking to you. Vincent has a foot peg design that protrudes above the floorboard, making your foot throb on every bump. Watch the machine slow down with each wheel hop, almost stopping, losing momentum, barely making it up the hill. This Arctic Cat is hard to tame in rough country. The machine wants to dart back and forth on the trail. Watch the rider compensate for sitting so tall in the saddle. And the diff lock four-wheel drive makes it difficult to navigate and steer around corners and over obstacles. With no stabilizer bar, the inside front tire loses traction in the corners. Watch it spin. It takes a lot of manhandling to get up this hill. The Sportsman 500 is the world's best-selling automatic 4x4, the first ATV in its class with electronic fuel injection. The anti-sway bar keeps you flat in the corners. Those McPherson struts absorb everything up front, while the IRS takes the hits behind, giving you sure-footed stability and maximum power to the ground. Make no mistake, this is one fast, responsive machine, plenty tough for the real world. Here's what the magazines are saying. If you dare, bang the throttle wide open, and this quad will squat, hook up, and launch down the trail like an attack dog chasing a crook. Here's part of the reason. While the rest of the industry was still tweaking carburetors, Polaris engineers were leading the way with the first electronic fuel injection for 500s. So, hot or cold, mountaintop or sea level, this 500cc powerhouse will rock your world. Here are the final results over the course. You can see for yourself that Sportsman 500 EFI doesn't take a back seat to anyone. Top to bottom, start to finish, this is the complete package. Some ATVs claim to have four wheel drive. With Polaris, you get two wheel drive all the time and all four wheels pulling when you need it. What makes a Polaris special is its ability to automatically sense this and switch back and forth as the terrain changes for the best traction and ease of steering available. This keeps you going without losing momentum. This test is what we call the rolling road. It helps you understand how four-wheel drive systems work. Three wheels ride on rollers and one wheel is held in place by an obstacle. 
machines approach in two-wheel drive, switch into four-wheel drive, then climb over the obstacle. At least that's the theory. Watch carefully. The actual results will surprise you. The Suzuki four-wheel drive button with a limited slip differential won't engage all four wheels. You need to stop and flip the differential lock to engage all four wheels. Even then, the Vinson still did not go over. The Honda's four-wheel drive switch only delivers power to three wheels. Their four-wheel drive is really just three-wheel drive because of the limited slip differential. And the rider is just plain stuck. The Arctic Cat switches to four-wheel drive. Notice the limited slip differential only allows three wheels to turn. You have to stop the machine and flip the diff lock lever. That's a lot of fiddling with buttons and levers to finally get into four-wheel drive. The sportsman rolls up in two-wheel drive. Flip the all-wheel drive switch, engaging all four wheels. Over you go with no effort. That's true all-wheel drive in action. Right here is the reason why the sportsman can go from two-wheel to true all-wheel drive on the fly. It's called an automatic bi-directional overrunning clutch for you guys who are taking notes. Here's two-wheel drive. Our smart technology automatically senses when the rear wheels slip, even before you do. Just flip the switch to engage both front wheels. It locks in with full torque, delivering true all-wheel traction. This is the easiest and quickest responding all-wheel drive on the market. And unlike any other machine, a Polaris engages and disengages all-wheel drive on its own, as you need it, automatically, when terrain or trail conditions change. So you can concentrate on the trail, instead of thinking about which button to push and lever to pull. That's smart. What do you want out on the trail? True all-wheel drive or something less? Think about it. Now let's get to the next test. Welcome to the real world of bumps. This is supposed to be what ATVs are built to handle, but they don't all deliver. The Vinson, with its straight axle, hops, jumps through the run, and finally kicks like a mule. In slow motion, the bars practically get torn out of his hands. The Foreman ES has a straight axle and not much suspension travel. And look at the chatter on those handlebars. That's a rough ride. The Sportsman, with McPherson struts and proven IRS, tracks straight and true with minimal handlebar feedback. Here's why. A Polaris suspension is the best in the industry, an integrated system that works from the ground up. Custom designed radio tires soak up shock at the point of impact. Rider calibrated suspension geometry with springs, shocks and struts articulate more to absorb impact better. The weight sled is a test of raw power and traction in the real world. Let's see what kind of guts these machines have when you drop the hammer in all-wheel drive. We put the whole 500 class to the test, and the cream rose to the top. The two Hondas emerge in a dead heat. The Rubicon, with its small two-star tires, has difficulty getting traction and only pulls 48 feet. The Honda Foreman starts slow, slipping side to side, and struggles to 49 feet. The Suzuki Vincent builds momentum, then chokes out at 69 feet. And the Arctic Cat's light front end wiggles and dances, pulling to 79 feet. But move over. The big dog is coming out to play. Quick responsive power to the ground with a custom tread pattern 
engineered for the long haul. The sportsman pulls the sled 89 feet. Sportsman clearly dominates in the 500 class. On the rolling road, the sportsman with true all-wheel drive flat out overpowers obstacles. The sportsman was first and still is the best with IRS for straight tracking and a smoother ride. On the weight sled, it's all Polaris. And it bears repeating that no other competitive machine outpulls a Polaris 500.